Today in class we went through a graphing equations review. These are graphs that you did extensively last year, but it's really important that you remember this before we move on, so I thought it was worth taking a day to do this. First of all, you learned how to graph lines using intercepts. A y-intercept is where your line crosses the y-axis, and an x-intercept is where your line crosses the x-axis. So my y-intercept of 6 means go to the y-axis and put a point at 6. My x-intercept of negative 4 says go to your x-axis and put a point at negative 4. Then we can draw a line going through those two points and finish my graph. Just a couple of quick things about graphing. You need to make sure that your graph goes all the way across your, your grid. You need to make sure to use a ruler or a straight edge to make it a good straight line and make sure that you have arrows on both ends to show that it goes on forever. Just in case you forgot, I wanted to remind you that that's going to be super important when we're graphing. Then you learned how to graph using a slope and an intercept. Our intercept, of course, if you only have one, is a y-intercept. So I'm going to come to my y-axis and put a point at negative 4. My slope of 3, slope of rise over run, doesn't do me any good when it's just a whole number. My slope must be a fraction. So I'm going to put that whole number over 1, which is how we make a whole number a fraction. A positive slope, remember, tells you to go up, then right. A negative slope tells you to go down, then right. There's tons and tons of videos on YouTube and Khan Academy to help you know how to use a slope and an intercept if you don't remember. On this one, though, my slope is a positive 3 over 1. That tells me to rise 3 and go to the right or run 1. I'm going to repeat that pattern up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1 as far as I can to help me make my graph a quality line. Remember to make your graph go all the way across, if I can get hold of it anyway. Your line should go all the way across your graph. Use a straight edge to make it nice and straight and make sure to put arrows on both ends. One more slope intercept. This time my y-intercept is a positive 6 and my slope is negative, which is telling me to go down 2, then to the right 5. I'm going to do that again, down 2, right 5, as many times as I can. My line then needs to go all the way across the graph, be nice and straight, and have arrows on both ends. Sometimes I'm going to be given my slope and intercept, but in equation form. Remember, slope-intercept is y equals mx plus b, where m is our slope, b is our y-intercept. This equation is telling me I have a y-intercept of negative 5. My slope is positive 3 fourths. Positive goes up, then right. So I'm going to go up 3 places to the right 4 places. And I'm going to do it again. 1, 2, 3, over 4. And I'm going to draw in my line. Oh, if I can grab the right tool anyway. Okay. Here's my line. That's the graphical representation of y equals 3 fourths x minus 5. 
One more slope intercept form. This time my, my y intercept is telling me it's positive 3. My slope is negative 1 half. That's telling me to go down then right. Down 1, right 2. Down 1, right 2. Continue the pattern as much as you can to make your graph awesome. Standard form is a bit different. I really can't graph specifically from standard form. There's lots of different tricks you can use, but the way that you were taught was to change it to slope intercept form. In order to do that, I'm going to have to take my x term to the other side and divide by the coefficient in front of my y. So there's another way, a different way to look at this. We want to get y all by itself so that I can be in, in slope intercept form. The y equals mx plus b form. So the first way I want you to look at it is I'm going to subtract the three x from both sides. Always get rid of your x term so that y can be by itself. That's going to leave me with a positive 2y. I'm going to change these terms around so that my x term can be first and my constant can be last. Then I'm going to have to divide everything by 2. That's going to give me y equals negative 3x divided by 2 is just going to leave me with a negative 3 halves x and 12 divided by 2 leaves me with a positive 6. That's telling me to cross the y-axis at 6, go down 3, right 2, down 3, right 2, down 3, right 2, and on and on until I can graph my line. Another way to look at rearranging equations, and I know it might seem a little strange up front, but remember how we were solving for y? You kind of need to look at what's happening to y. Right now, y is being multiplied by a coefficient of positive 2. Then it has this positive 3x in front of it. That positive 3x, because it's positive, I'm going to say it's being added to 3x to equal 12. If I go in reverse order up this list using opposite operations, I'll get the same equation I did before. So ending with 12, the opposite of ending with 12 is beginning with 12. The opposite of adding 3x is subtracting 3x. The opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. And the opposite of beginning with y is ending with y. Now if I simplify, you may have heard it used the, or called the heart theorem before means everything over here gets divided by 2. The negative 3x gets divided by 2, gives me a negative 3 halves x. And the 12 gets divided by 2, which gives me a positive 6. If I set that equal to y, I'm now in slope-intercept form. It's called heart theorem because it looks a little bit like a Valentine's heart. Not too much when I draw it, but you know. Let's try that with another standard form. Again, I'm trying to get y by itself, so I'm going to start out with y. y is being multiplied by a coefficient of negative 5. The 2x is positive, so I'm going to say it's being added to a term of 2x to equal 10. So opposite of starting or sorry ending with 10 is starting with 10. 
Opposite of adding 2x is subtracting 2x. Opposite of multiplying by negative 5 is dividing by negative 5. And opposite of starting with y is ending with y. If I use my heart theorem to simplify, negative over a negative is a positive, and I get 2 fifths x. Going this direction, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, my x didn't draw very well, and 10 over 5 is 2. If I set that equal to y again, there's my slope intercept form. So I can start at negative 2, go up to right 5, up to right 5, and draw in my line. Let me know if you have any questions. This worksheet, in case you were absent, will be scanned and put on Canvas. So make sure to grab that if you don't already have it. I'll see you in class. Make sure to write down any questions and good luck.